Why do we like the normal curve? The reason is, if we can assume that an empirical distribution has roughly the same shape as a normal distribution, then we can estimate probabilities using our knowledge of the normal distribution. So, for example, if we can assume that house prices follow a normal distribution with a mean of $250,000 and a standard deviation of $50,000, we can now ask or answer what percent of houses should we expect to find above 250,000? Well, if 250,000 is the mean and the houses are normal, then we should expect to find 50% of houses more than $250,000. What about above $300,000? Well, if this is the case, we know that the standard deviation is $50,000. So essentially we're asking for what is the per what percent of houses have a value of more than mu plus sigma? And actually, that was the last thing we just calculated on the last slide. What percent of houses has a value more than mu plus sigma? We said it was 15.9%. In order to solve these problems in a more general sense, we're going to introduce the notion of standard scores, or z-scores, known as normal deviates. If we can assume that an empirical distribution is more or less shaped like a normal curve, then we can transform empirical observations or values from the empirical distribution and standardize them into a normal distribution that we know all of our probabilities for. So in order to transform a raw variable like house price x into a z-score, we're going to subtract the mean of the distribution from x, and we're going to divide by the standard deviation. We're going to use mu and sigma if the population parameters are known. But if we're estimating those population parameters from a sample, we're going to standardize the values using x bar and the sample standard deviation. Essentially what this does is it rewrites raw data values into numbers of standard deviations away from the mean. You can see that x minus x bar is just a deviation away from the mean. And when we divide by the standard deviation, then z is the difference expressed in terms as the number of standard deviations. So it's the deviance of x from x bar expressed in terms of the number of standard deviations away from the mean. Z-scores describe the number of standard deviations an observation is from the distribution's mean. Observations above the mean will have positive Z-scores, increasing in size as the raw score increases. Observations below the mean will have negative Z-scores, scores that then decrease in size as the raw score decreases. The higher and lower the Z-score, the more unusual that observation is. So Z-scores near zero are very common, but z-scores in the extremities, say plus or minus 3, are, much, are very rare. And we can tell that from this curve. Originally on this curve, we just had the, the locations denoted as mu and, and uh, standard deviations away from mu. But now that we know that z equals x minus mu over sigma, we can see that an x value that equals mu, so if x equals mu, uh, so this is mu, is going to have a z-score of 0, because it's no standard deviations away from the mean. It is the mean. If x equals mu plus sigma, well, this is going to be mu plus sigma minus mu. We're going to have sigma over sigma. This equals sigma over sigma equals 1, a z of 1. So a value of mu plus sigma is going to have a z-score of 1. So a standard normal curve is a curve with a mean of 0 and a standard deviation of 1. When we map x values 
two z-scores, we're essentially remapping them into the scale of a standard normal curve. So let's go back to our example. House prices are found to be normally distributed, uh, and the average house price in Toronto is $350,000 with a standard deviation of $60,000. So a, z, a raw score of 350,000, what would the z-score be? Well, we know that this raw score is equal to the average of the distribution, and therefore it's not diff and therefore the z-score has to be 0 because the z-score is x minus mu. 350 minus 350, we're going to have a z-score of 0. What about a value of 410? In order to do that, we're going to calculate z equals 410 minus 350 x minus mu over 60,000. So we're going to have 1, we're going to have 60 on top, so it equals 1. If we add $60,000 more, well, that's one more standard deviation, and this is one more standard deviation on top of that. Similarly, if we move down from 350 by one standard deviation to 290, that's a z-score of minus 1, minus 2, and here at 170, we have a z-score of minus 3. Over here, I've shown you the math of how we would have computed the z-score for $170,000. Now, let's take these solutions and place them on the normal curve. So, in the green boxes we have the raw values of the x variables. And th on top of that I have the z-scores. So now we can answer questions about the probabilities of seeing houses between different prices. So for example, I can now ask you what's the probability of seeing a house with the price between 350 and 410? Well, because we know that that's between a z-score of 0 and a z-score of 1, or in other words a value of mean of mu plus mu plus sigma, we know that there's exactly 34.1% probability of seeing a house uh, a house priced in that range.